Hey everyone, Bethany Wilson here with Rough Beginnings Rehab and this video is going to be on the four quadrants of balanced dog training. Now what in the world does that even mean? It's actually the four quadrants of just life training, of conditioning. What is this science stuff everybody keeps talking about? Science-based training. What does that mean? We're going to go over all of that today. This is going to be a fun video. Get ready to go. All right, peeps, we've got uh, positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement, positive punishment and negative punishment. So that's what these mean. I've got positive reinforcement, positive meaning to add to it. That's what positive mean means. It doesn't mean a uh, positive as in a good thing. That's not what this means in this context. It just means I'm adding something. It's supposed to increase the likelihood or, or strengthen the likelihood of seeing something again by adding something to the equation. All right, so this is really easy for the positive reinforcement, right? Typical things is um, petting your dog, good pets, right? Um, yes, food, yes, food. That is gonna increase the likelihood of seeing a behavior again. It's as simple as that, at least on paper, right? Okay, so an example where this can really backfire on you. Well, my Border Collie loves to play fetch. I mean, loves to play fetch. No, this isn't like some of you people out there with your little, you know, fluffy family dogs, okay? This is a Border Collie. This is serious. So you would think that me having the ball, asking my dog to sit, I could use it as a reward, and then throw the ball, and he would come back and be more likely to sit each time. I am adding something positive, which would be adding the ball, that my dog sees as a reward, because he loves the ball, but yet the, uh, huh, the sitting is getting less and less likely each time he comes back to me and then he's starting to whine and then he's starting to point with the front leg and then there's panting and drooling. So my point is something that you would typically think would be positive reinforcement to increase the likelihood of the sit ends up increasing the crazy ball obsessed drive even though I'm trying to use the ball to get the sit. Let your dog tell you if it's actually a good thing or a bad thing, a good consequence or a bad consequence, not what you think should happen. Negative reinforcement, negative meaning to remove. Okay, so the easiest example, negative reinforcement, is the mailman comes to the door and then the mailman leaves. So that leaving reinforces the likelihood of the barking happening again. Your dog is like, yes, look, I controlled the mailman through. The mailman walks away and happens again and again, every single day, every day, reinforcing the barking. A surprisingly common negative reinforcement that does not work in the way that you think that it should work is when we get in really nervous, fearful dogs. You would think that petting being calm and petting the dog would get them used to your touch and would want to make them come to you more and they would get more and more comfortable. I cannot tell you how many times that is not the case at all. With those dogs, we often put more pressure on them to be social and they distance themselves from us. Um, they don't want to have anything to do with us. Less and less and less. And before long, you screwed up the new dog that you got from the shelter because you're trying to force them to love you. So that dog would actually view petting as positive because I'm adding petting, I'm adding pets, positive punishment because that dog wants nothing to do with me and my pets. So what I would do instead, what we do instead, is we ignore the dog. We remove emotion, social pressure. We only do what we need to do with the dog and we remove the affection. Actually builds comfort in the dog. And then what starts to happen is the dog starts to seek us out for attention. Now, does that happen every time? No, of course not every time, which is kind of the theme of this whole thing. If you haven't figured it out yet. Fine, we have positive punishment. <gasps> what? You use the word Punishment. Oh my God. We're adding something. That's what it means by positive. Adding. And it's the point of the punishment is to decrease 
the likelihood of seeing it again. Yes, I am well aware of the very controversial term and the use of the word punishment and how science and real results have decided to remove that entire quadrant of real life. Which is why I want to explain not only why we use it, how it's used, when to use it, but the necessity of it. When you remove punishment, you get serious antisocial behavior. So let's talk about punishment. Let's talk about real life. It could be so many things. Spatial pressure, firm tone of voice, a noise that startles your dog out of barking, making them less likely to bark again. A gentle leader, a slip leash, a front clip harness that jerks your dog's shoulders to the side. It could be an e-collar, cow touching an electric fence. It can be you touching a cactus. It could be your dog getting hit by a car. It could be one of your dogs mauling the other dog for getting in their food bowl. It could be your dog getting kicked by a horse. Look, I don't know about you, but I like teaching punishment properly rather than having real life do it because real life kills dogs. That's how real life punishes dogs. So a quick example of positive punishment that should work, but then ends up not working. What about if your dog is barking your puppy, your puppy is barking its head off in crate. You go in there, no. Turn around, walk out. Barks again. You go back in there, no. Maybe you tap the top of the crate. Puppy goes, whoa. Five seconds later, bark, 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 bark. after several repetitions, you realize every time you walk in the room, your dog's, your puppy's tail is wagging. Wag, wag, wag. They're doing it to get attention. The positive punishment is really not enough for them. And they could, they could care less that you startled them and they'd rather see you. It's like children who act out to get attention. They get attention. They act out again. If they don't get attention for doing anything else, they've got it figured out. They do something bad, they get attention, right? Maybe that's why they call it balanced training. Maybe you need everything. Hmm. Negative punishment. Decrease the likelihood of seeing something happen by removing. This one is a pain. I see a lot of frustration built in dogs actually out of this one. So you have to be careful with it though. It can be very beneficial. So a perfect example is your dog is um, sitting for their food bowl and you're trying to teach them to wait for their food bowl without applying, adding positive punishment. Okay. So you're not adding anything. We're taking away, right? So you put the food bowl down and the dog goes for the food bowl. You remove the food. You pull it back. Ask the dog to sit again. You put the food bowl down, dog goes for the food, you remove it. We actually see a lot of dogs get really frustrated with this. And then I just end up needing to apply a punishment, which is usually just a little block or little leash guidance, something like that. And it calms them down and then they're able to learn with the removal method. That's not every dog but that's a lot of dogs. So you do have to watch when you're removing something to apply punishment because you can end up causing a lot of frustration and sometimes it's just much cleaner and easier to uh, just be clear and quick about what you do and don't want. But it can be a very useful quadrant. The main thing guys is let the dog tell you what's working and what's not working. Is what you're doing increasing the behavior or decreasing the behavior? Listen to your dog. Pretty cool stuff, huh? I bet you've uh, learned a few things. You'll be able to be more efficient with your dog. And that makes me really happy. But I have to be honest with you. Part of dog training is this. The other part It is not real life. Not in the human world, not in the animal world. What are you doing? <gasps> what are you doing? No! The four quadrants gives you some idea that it's equal. Balance does not mean equality. You have to work organically. You have to look at the dog. You have to know when to throw out the four quadrants.
Don't get locked into what you think needs to happen. Those four quadrants are not equal. Depending on the dog, one is way more powerful to that dog than the other. For instance, we've gotten in a handful of dogs this year uh, with anxiety issues. Anxiety is always one of the trickier ones that you really have to stay on top of things. If we praised every behavior where that dog did good or punished every behavior where that dog exhibited something unwanted, we would have ruined that dog. Too much communication. So many things, good and bad, we just let go. And as a result, the dog was able to absorb more when we did communicate with him. That is because adding or removing something as a consequence is simply not enough. It's the tip of the iceberg. It's a very important part of the iceberg, but it's just the tip. Trainers tend to talk about setting your dog up to win. We talk about that all the time and when to strategically set them up to fail. What about everything in the middle? Do you know how much there is in the middle? It's a lot. Okay, so what about for you guys with normal dogs out there? Do you literally call them into the kitchen every day, ask them to sit, sit, and give them a treat every single time, but yet you don't ask much else of them? You are crippling them for life. You're basically taking away your dog's ability to learn. You don't praise them every single little tiny thing. Once your dog knows something backwards and forwards, you ask for more. That is how they learn and earn. And when they earn things, it keeps them from being spoiled little monsters that develop anxiety. Look, the bottom line is know this, understand it, but don't be afraid to toss it out the window. What are you doing? You suck at this. <laughs>